My name is Rachel Hawes and I'm from the Midwest part of the United States. My journey started when I was studying for my bachelor's degree in criminal justice and working for a private retail company. I specifically work with the fraud prevention department and would deal with online orders that customers placed. Over a period of about three years with the company, I really enjoyed learning about the techniques that attackers would use and also how drastically they changed in that short period of time. I also loved having the opportunity to educate our customers on how to better protect themselves from such an attack. The worst cases I dealt with when I was with the company were on the orders that would pl be placed by a victim's family member. At that point in time, the victim would have to file a police report just to get the issues resolved. However, from that experience, I became highly interested in the cybersecurity career and had a huge break when there was an opening with the federal government agency. After about six years as a cybersecurity technician, I decided to go back to college to pursue my Master's of Science in Cybersecurity with Western Governors University. The program really helped expand my previous knowledge from experience I had, as well as allowed me to obtain certifications like CHFI. The program really went to great technical detail with the forensic investigations, which I appreciated because I was moving into a new position as a cyber defense operational role. I love taking the courses and being able to apply what I learned from class to world scenarios. Overall, I'm really happy with my decision to pursue a cybersecurity career. I've always loved putting, conducting investigations, putting pieces together, and figuring out what actually happened. I believe there's two major challenges. The first one involves legal technical challenges. Nowadays, technology is changing at such a high rate of speed that by the time an investigator masters one technique, the attacker is now using a new technique in order to hide themselves. Some examples that come to mind are encryption, stenography, and covert channels. I'm sure there's much newer techniques being used today, and that's why it's so important an investigator be able to learn and adapt to these changes. In order to do so, the investigator may need to read recently published articles or books, or even consider attending seminars offered by other companies. The other major issue facing investigators today involves legal challenges specifically jurisdiction and privacy. Jurisdiction can really be a big part and a big challenge for the investigator because if they stumble upon some information that they're investigating only to find out later they don't have the authority to investigate that, now it seems like all your efforts are wasted because it's passed off to someone else. Finally, privacy is also another big issue. There's a very thin line on what can legally be used and what crosses that threshold of invading someone's personal privacy. That's why it's so important the investigator understand their company's policies, procedures, and even laws that may have impact their work. Well, the certification allowed me to learn the technical side of digital forensics, as well as the different plethora of tools available to obtaining data on a device. It also stressed the importance of preserving data on a device as well. If data is not handled correctly, there's a chance that you may lose pertinent data for investigation. I also learned how to put the pieces together into the bigger picture. For having the skill, it's been proven valuable, invaluable on multiple occasions throughout my career. Additionally, the chain of custody document is important as well. If the documentation is not handled correctly, the evidence may be considered tampered with and thrown out if taken to court. Finally, the different file system architectures like Linux and Windows are important as well. An investigator must have this basic understanding of different file systems in order to know how to investigate an event. By having this understanding, he or she will be able to know how to protect the data, know what happened, and how to mitigate an event if it does occur. Prior to taking the actual exam, I took a prep course in my university. Initially, I felt very overwhelmed at the information I was reading and had a hard time grasping the different operating system architectures. I never really had a reason to understand or know how different file system structures worked, but I really enjoyed reading about each one of them. I'm also a visual learner, so luckily for me, my prep course has some hands-on labs to practice and learn. But to really learn the material, I began examining my own personal device. For instance, I remember one day I was looking at my MacBook and learning how to examine header information. One of the sections I was reading at the time walked me through the steps to do this, and I really enjoyed learning how to do that. I never really knew why someone would want to do this or how to do it, break down header information. But with the amount of phishing emails that exist today, with the ability for them to be much more craftier, I can definitely understand and see why someone wants to know how to break down header information. Also, my class required me to pass their own version of their test before I was given a voucher to take CHFI. After successfully passing their exam, I then took several practice tests in order to feel much more prepared for the actual day of my exam. 
Overall, I found CHFI to be very challenging at times, but I really enjoyed the material. There are three topics I really enjoyed from the program, IoT forensics, investigating email crimes, and mobile forensics. I found IoT forensics very interesting because they're so predominant now in homes and businesses. I also read several articles in the past of how easy it was to hack these devices and with something as simple as a thermostat being used in a fish tank. The program really goes in great detail on how these devices function as well as to better protect them. For example, I have several IoT devices in my home that by going through the program I was able to learn how to better harden my own devices from outside threats. Additionally, I found investigating email crimes fascinating. So many people nowadays work from home and have telework capability because of the pandemic. And their primary communication method now is through email. I had no idea how much information you get just by looking at an email. By going through the program, I understood, I now understand why it's so important to look at the digital footprint from the header inside an email. Lastly, I found mobile forensics exhilarating to learn. So many people now have some type of mobile device they use, whether it's just to use as their home phone or to browse the internet. The program goes into great detail about all the tools available that exist to get data off these devices. And because so many people are using these devices nowadays for most everything, it is super important investigator know which tool they need to use to get data off these devices. The incident response portion of the program has benefited me and several work centers I've worked in. I've been in the cybersecurity realm for a while now, and I've worked in several environments that had a great incident response plan and others that did not. In the work centers that did not have an incident response plan, I noticed a lot of a more of a chance for human error in data collection and reporting procedures. For example, some instances require much faster reporting time, and if they did not establish these requirements, they were more likely to break them. Depending on the situation, a high-level category breach would have a much faster reporting time of less than four hours. Additionally, data was more likely to be lost or incorrectly handled. Therefore, having a clear and concise incident response plan is important for any workplace. The plan must make sure to outline what to do, how to report an event, and the after actions to take. If the work center does not do this, there's a higher chance for human error and the possibility of losing vital information for investigation. That's why it's so important the plan be distinct and not leave any room for anyone to guess. It really depends on your current position and the employer you work for, but CHFI can play a big role in your career progression. It really all depends on your current position and what e information, people, or assets you're trying to protect. With that being said, the use of technology in today's home and work environment makes digital forensics much more important and much more valuable. Understanding and knowing how to identify, preserve, analyze, and present facts for an investigation may be proven vital in holding someone accountable, or in some cases, stop or prevent an event from occurring. For instance, if an investigator doesn't follow the rules to obtain data from a device or doesn't document the chain of custody document, evidence may be thrown out. Additionally, if important steps are skipped to backup data before you make a change on that device, you may lose some or all of your data. Overall, CGFI can make a big impact on your career, especially if you want to progress within a SOC. But for me, the goal of understanding digital forensics is knowing how to put those pieces together in order to tell a story. You're trying to figure out what happened by lining up those events from the data you are given. Becoming an expert in digital forensics and obtaining certifications like CGFI will not only help prepare someone to progress in their career, but also help them keep up with the ever-evolving cyber realm. Three things. Don't give up, take plenty of study breaks, and relax whenever possible. I really encourage anyone studying for this test to really take the time to learn the material. I would also suggest to possibly purchase a book or download a digital copy of the book or even take, consider taking an online prep course. I would highly discourage anyone from cramming the material in a short period of time as it's a lot of material to take in. If you do decide to purchase a book or take an online prep course, I would suggest answering the questions at the end of each section and then reviewing any questions you may have missed before moving on. And then once you're starting to feel comfortable with material, I would suggest taking a larger practice exam over all the material. By doing this, you'll have an understanding of how much you understand the material, as well as feel much more confident in your ability to take the exam. Finally, before I actually take the test, I would suggest scoring on average 85 to 90% on any practice exam. By taking the time to really learn the material, reviewing areas your weekend, and taking practice tests, you will feel prepared to take the test.